Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 54 of A Wild Podcast Has Appeared, the official Pokemon podcast of comicbook.com. I am one of your hosts, Jim Viscardi, and as always, I am joined by Christian Hoffer and Megan Peters. Welcome, folks. Hello. I have yet another background. There we go. It's like, it's, yep. we, we never know what we're going to get with Megan each week. I don't know. We never know. Meanwhile, yep. my background has never changed in like the 54 weeks we've done this. <laughs> you know, I remember the stability I, here. I remember like we had uh, the work that went into Christian's background. We were like, hey, we got to launch this. Hey, it's going to be on video. Hey, you need a backdrop. Yeah. It's like, it's like hey, <laughs> you're, you're like, your office sucks. <laughs> Buy, do, do you have bookcases? Yeah. Buy them. Fill them with Pokemon things. I'm getting you a build, build a bear. There we go. And the rest is history. Yeah. So, uh, if you're new to the show, we uh, talk about all things Pokemon. We like to make you. We like to think this show helps to make you a better, smarter Pokemon fan. We uh, broken up. It, the show's broken up into three parts. We do news at the top, uh, top part, and then we take a break. Then we do a deep dive into a discussion topic uh, of the week, and then at the very, very end, Christian uh, gives us a Pokemon fact of the week megan i cannot believe that you missed the uh geodude week because whew, boy oh boy that was a good one damn <laughs> i you know i just hate to have missed it i mean i, I just know. we know how much i love geodude <laughs> yeah, i know i realized that was two weeks ago now but i just still need to bring it up the fact that you missed the geo i i did listen to it i thought it was rousing discussion <laughs> i was though shocked at how agreeable both of you were to one another it's true that uh, generally never happens so uh, yeah Go ahead. We, we will kick it off with the Golem fact that we didn't actually talk about. Golem is the only Pokemon of the core 150 Pokemon from the original games, not counting Mew, of course, because, mm -hmm. you know, Mew is weird. That is the only Pokemon that can does not appear in the original Pokemon games at all, unless you have one. So all 149 oh. other Pokemon are present either in the wild or, or owned by that. a trainer. Golem is wow. not. Do you even, uh, and yeah, the, Gengar is? I'm trying yeah. to think of like the trade Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah Gengar. No. Wow. Um, you know, idea. all of those. But apparently the Pokemon, the, the makers of the those original Pokemon games were also ashamed of Golem. Nah, stop it. That is not the reason. <laughs> Wow. Get out of here with that I mean, BS. Golem is objectively the best evolution, though, of that series. Oh, like, sure. I feel like well, you know, they that's... needed to include. Nope, nope, Christian, we'll just leave it at that. Golem is the best uh, evolution of that line, <laughs> and that is it. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, Gigantamax Eevee is currently in Sword and Shield raids. Last week, we told you about Big Chunky Pikachu uh, coming to, to raids. So if you wanted to upgrade the, the Pikachu that you may have gotten from other various places, uh, you can. Uh, this is the... Uh, now, you know, now it's Eevee's turn. So if you didn't have an E from Let's Go, that could Gigantamax. Now you can get a Gigantamax Eevee. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that that's it's only lasting until the end of this weekend. So we mm -hmm. only have until I believe the twenty fifth yep. uh to do so. So hurry it up, people. I mean it's not like you're missing anything if you don't have it, unless you are just a collection perfectionist yeah, like myself, or you just really want perfect IVs for Eevee. Mm -hmm. Uh but it's or, basically or you useless. want <laughs> or you want Eevee's very surprisingly uh, so Eevee ha Eevee's hidden ability is anticipation, mm -hmm. which means it will like shudder in anticipation, which is the weirdest it's like yeah. you know thing. Like you know the the reason it shudders is it's warning you that your opponent has something that can kill it in like one hit or a super effective move. However, that comes off as like Eevee shudders in anticipation. It's like that is like the beginning of like Pokemon erotica right there. <laughs> Um, yeah. I mean, it just sounds so weird because, like, when you say like shuddering and anticipation, it does imply like excitement or like right. you know something or, like arousal or, arousal. or like arousal. something like that. Yeah. But Evie clearly isn't excited about this. Yes. <laughs> like, no. it should be like like quivers or something. Yes. That's have... even more sexual, Megan. Oh, okay, that so... is not trembling. I don't know. <laughs> there, there was a... sexual. Okay, Hopper. Those you are all get that mind out of the right, gutter. Right. Well, we're all, all going to take a Megan. step. We're all going to take a step out of the gutter 
And uh, I just think Hopper's the you, only one who needs you, to do that. Could you imagine if Mr. Mime had that hit in the building? Uh, nope. Uh, and now uh, we're moving on. Next, Mr. Mime quivers with Meowth. anticipation. Uh, you get Gigantamax Meowth next week. So yes, we'll talk about Meowth Meowth. next week. Long yes. Cat Meowth. Which does yes. not tremble with anticipation or anything no. else. Body no. Cat Meowth. Or, or Body Pillow Meowth. God. Basically, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you done. doing this to me? <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> you two are you two are the worst. Oh, uh, I've <laughs> really done nothing. Why did you have to say that, Jim? I've literally done nothing. I was All trying to right. correct. Hoffman. You're the one who was talking about meow body pillows. Uh, so Pokemon Go is a game that we all still play. And this week, we currently have the Owen Throwback Challenge, uh, but it's it's kind of crappy. All I have to say is this. Niantic, make freaking ghost Pokemon spawn if you're going to have a, <laughs> have a ghost, ghost type challenge. Yeah. Give me the god <laughs> darn ghost type. I have spent five incense from every hour. I was up this morning at 4 30 in the freaking morning nursing and not nursing feeding a newborn i'm like oh time to get my ghost pokemon throw on incense and it's like oh i think you want a worm ball i'm like i do not want a worm ball <laughs> what's like worm are you sure? is everywhere i am worm ball everywhere. everywhere it's like would you like a worm ball in this trying time it's like i would not like this like, worm ball i'm gonna pull any time pokemon go right now and it's going to be the worm yeah. is going to be in yeah. my backyard it's 900 percent going to be worm ball. It's like my does, my favorite thing is i just because i have notifications on so like pokemon go will give me notifications i get notifications if not every 30 minutes then at least like every like 45 ish to an hour they never stop trying to be like, come on, get these ghost Pokemon. And it's like, I would love to. <laughs> Honestly, I would be thrilled to catch one at this point. They don't even show up on my never... radar. Yeah, no. I mean, if I wanted to walk through my neighborhood at 5 a.m. in the morning to the nearest Pokestop in the pouring down rain through a bunch of road construction that's currently going on, I could have gotten a ghost type Pokemon at 5 a.m. in the morning. And that's the only ghost type Pokemon I see. I will be unable to complete the throwback challenge umbrella challenge because i cannot get this one like just just throw sable eyes give me some dust skulls give me something <laughs> just anything i don't care what it's it's yep. starting to it's starting to annoy me yep it it's just so you got happening. you got like one day and like five hours from the time this uh, thing goes live to 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 finish it so good luck maybe you'll see a ghost type pokemon somewhere because we <laughs> sure haven't <laughs> yeah we they don't exist at this point no nope. just just so we're all clear in other pokemon go news you have the ability now to vote on june and july's community day pokemon yes so the good news here is that pokemon go is keeping up with the time and has given mur murder hornets an option as one of the upcoming community uh, choices. However, these are kind of like disappointing. I'll be honest. Like, so the, the four choices are Squirtle, Weedle, Sand Slash, both Alolan and uh, Kanto, and Ghastly. Now of those four, I believe, we well, Squirtle definitely has. Um, Gengar has appeared in multiple events uh you know uh, and the ghastly line i don't think they've gotten a community day yet but you know they've they've popped up i can't remember that because the that would have been like three years ago when that community day happened uh weedle you know while weedle doesn't have a shiny in the game yet you know so that's that's the big why you would vote vote for that it's it's literally the only one of these species that doesn't have a shiny uh pokemon in the wild right now it, it's not a good Pokemon. Like, <laughs> Beedrill is not a good Pokemon. And even, even like, their write-up for it, it's like, yeah, here's all these, like, competitive advantages with the moves that we're going to give you. Also, Beedrill has Drill Run. I'm sure you can come up with something about that. And it's like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we know that a lot of Pokemon Go players, I mean, it's split in half between the collection perfectionists and the actual, like, hardcore metagame players. So, 
I would like, I mean, I don't care about shinies. I just want the murder hornets because let's do it. But honestly, of all of these, I'm pretty ambivalent about it. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like how I felt so passionately about the, the other, the other voting options, but no, I'll go, I'll go Beedrill. Yeah, I think I think I want to see the Santru one only because they're finally going to give Alolan Santru a real fast move. Like oh, right now, really? it has it, right now he like only has Powder Snow, which sucks. Yeah, it does nothing. Um, and so we're we're finally going to get like a a better fast move for that. So you know, turning Sand Slash into a Pokemon that you can use mm-hmm. for something. Um, so I'll probably vote for that one, and I haven't decided. Um what what i want my other one to be i mean i think ghastly the the uh either blastoise is learning aura sphere which i think is a pretty useful move for it Mm -hmm. um it'll give it some coverage against steel type pokemon so maybe that that's probably the best of the four yeah it's it's a little disappointing i'm sad yeah it's all right you win some you lose some yeah, that's yeah. the name of Pokemon Go yeah. right there. That's, that's <laughs> literally the point of Pokemon. <laughs> that is basically Niantic's model. Like, you know, you win some, like Pokemon Go, and you lose some, like Harry Potter. Ouch. Yeah. Who remembers that? Shout out to the Harry Potter game, Rip. <laughs> wow. They haven't closed it yet. No. no, they haven't. I see so many mobile ads for it on Reddit, though. Oh, I know. Instantly, they're everywhere. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll get a press release about them, and it's like, yeah, we're going to be releasing Hermione Granger into the wild. Catch her while you can. It's like, oh, like that's got some disturbing connotations. Or like, oh, Severus Snape is now an incorrigible or something like that. I forget what they're, they call those How did you names. say his name? Severus? Severus? Severus. It's Severus. It's Severus. It is Severus. I do like Severus, though. That's like a very, Listen, like... Listen, guys, I got two hours of sleep last night. Like, the fact that I can say the word Pokemon correctly is a blessing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I used to say Hermione Hermie, like Hagrid, for the you know, longest they, time when I was a kid. And then my be, mom corrected me. <laughs> no fine. one, you, no one child, in the United so States fine. knew how to say that name until the fourth book, where she literally stuck a pronunciation guide for her name as dialogue in the middle of that damn book. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, don't feel any shame about that. Anyways, back to Pokemon. Back to Pokemon, because we're going to talk about the anime a little bit. And yeah. it's been it's been crazy. There have been uh, a number of old interviews that have been uh, popping up uh, here yes. and there. They have been just filled with little tiny gold nuggets of just like little fun things mm-hmm. uh, for us yes. to, to kind of talk about. And one of them is the fact that Lugia not supposed to be in the game. Designed for yeah. the game. Well, I yeah. say well, sorry. it was not supposed to be for the game. It was designed by the, the, the anime people. Hey, yeah person of the, of the anime series and, yeah. you know, was then incorporated as such. But yeah. it, this does explain why Ho-Oh and Lugia, like they kind of, you, you, everything about those two Pokemon are kind of weird. Yeah, they like look they, so totally like, different. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Lugia, usually there's, there's, sorry, I don't mean, I mean no, no, completely. usually there's that, that like the legendaries look similar-ish. Yeah. Like, you know, they have similar-ish characteristics or whatnot. And those two just, they're just yeah. birds. Yeah, well, yeah. hell, I, is, is Lugia a bird? I mean, that's like a dinosaur. Yeah. Like, which I guess is technically a bird, but yeah. like, you know, and it's like Lugia lives in the sea, but it's a psychic type Pokemon. Yeah. Um, you know, there's just a lot of like weird, I mean, don't get me wrong. Pokemon mythology in general is all sorts of messed stuff. Yeah, especially but, when you get to the legendaries. Yeah. Oh, but usually yeah. there's at least, I was reading, I was reading some of those the other day and I was just cracking up. I was like, Oh, that's why they're called this. These represent, like, you know, Taoist beliefs. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And it's like, but yeah, like the the Lugia Ho, it it makes sense that, you know, these Pokemon, that Lugia, the director came up with a cool design, wanted to use in a movie, and the game yeah. people are like, yeah, let's 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 use this. And then they're like, yeah, we'll figure out some way to to bring in that. And that's why Lugia has literally nothing to do in that movie 
with anything remotely related to like gold and silver. Yeah. So for some more context into the interview, this was written, the, these, this not, it wasn't even an interview. So the, the commentary came from Takeshi Shudo, who is the original writer of the Pokemon anime from 97 to 2002, short, where he shortly, unfortunately, uh, passed away. And he did a bunch of like personal blogs um, during his time working on Pokemon. And to, to his credit, I mean, he comes out and straight says it, that he became obsessed with Lugia. It was, a, it was a Pokemon that, I mean, he was obsessed with. He wrote about Lugia at length, how he created, you know, the design of Lugia to basically represent coexistence. It was a bird, but it was a fish. It was, you know, all this kind of stuff all together. It was male, it was female. It was all this coexistence basically into a Pokemon. Um, and so he basically was able to do whatever he wanted with Lugia because he proved he was able to do Mewtwo Strikes Back with such success. Because when he did that first movie, the Pokemon company had very little to do with it because they were dealing with the aftermath of the Porygon seizure incident in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were like, oh, we trust you, Shudo. So he came up with Lugia, he presented it, and then they were like, oh, we're going to use this in the video games. And Shudo was like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, I, I don't, what do you mean? Because <laughs> um, that's kind of like the first time they've had that transference. So it's interesting to see like how far gold and silver was at the time compared to when, you know, things were really getting into movement for um, the, the second Pokemon movie. But yeah, Lugia was an anime original monster that they they brought into the game. Poor Ho Oh just never stood a chance. Um, but yeah, super interesting. Shudo. I wonder if there was, was like obsessed. if they if they had a legendary all ready to go that that wasn't Lugia, but would have been in, in Lugia's place. Well, let's look up the beta. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's something we can do. But it's interesting reading. I mean, Shudo wrote blog post after blog post after blog post about Lugia and his interests. And he said when the anime was finally recording, um, he said basically, and in, in according to the translation from the Japanese, almost literally says he wanted to die after he heard that Lugia was being voiced by a male, that it had oh. a masculine voice because he really felt that Lugia was a had a female voice and he was very upset about that presentation of the Pokemon um and the anime and further in the games based on like gendering how they do male and female Pokemon um so Shuda was not a fan of that he felt very much it, it didn't need to be like gendered or anything like that and it was really interesting I mean he I feel like <laughs> that was his masterpiece for him <laughs> I mean, and like he would just come out and say it, and he was just like, "I am obsessed with what Lugia like represents." Um, that's crazy. And I know, and I was like, "That's especially yeah. since Lugia has kind of been backburnered." <laughs> like I, feel I know, like it's very. I feel like it's because I mean, the person who knew the Pokemon best and who could have made a trajectory for that legendary Pokemon was Shudo, yeah. and he unfortunately passed away um, before you know, like shortly after the second film yeah. um, went out, I mean, he, he died. And so I feel like they had this great Pokemon. They had all this stuff they could have done with him, but then the person who knew him best passed away and the team didn't know what to do with him since Shudo was so isolated and creating him. Mm -hmm. So it sucks because uh, I love Lugia. <laughs> so Lugia does not appear in the 1997 Space World beta. Ho-Oh does. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And the legendary cats do as well. And actually... They actually kind of look more like dogs in this. Yeah, they, literally, they really they do. literally changed from dogs to pretty cat to, to cats. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, uh, no, no Lugia. So that was definitely a uh, later addition to the game. I wonder yeah. if that was more because of like, um, uh, you know how red and blue only had you know Mewtwo as the the you know final Pokemon the final Pokemon and then so Ho Ho would have been the final Pokemon for that yeah and then we got into this crazy cycle of having two legendaries one per game yeah that's yeah. true see it's intense but yeah just a little bit of neat history for you about Lugia. <laughs> 
Get a little rainbow going for you now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, last thing for the news. Uh, apparently, there was an imp- an imposter, Professor Oak, okay. originally in Gold and Silver. Well, Jim, as you being the Pokemon trading card game expert, surely knows about the imp- imposter, Professor Oak card that appeared in the original Pokemon base set. Uh, it was a equivalent card to the Professor Oak card and showed a dude who looked a lot like Professor Oak, only had like a forehead scarf. Yeah. And imposter Professor Oak was a, is a recurring character in the trading card game. He's appeared on three different cards. No explanation about this guy <laughs> ever given. So the and this isn't again. This is not a new story. We've known apparently we've known this since 2018. I just didn't know about it. <laughs> um, in the 1997 Space World beta for Pokemon Gold and Silver. There was indeed an imposter Professor Oak. He was originally intended to be some sort of villain in the game. We don't know what exactly this character would have been used for, but it is incredibly likely... Shenanigans. Well, well, yeah, duh. Um, But since Professor Oak is recording at the Golden Rod radio tower and Team Rocket later takes on, takes over that radio tower, it is very possible that imposter professor oak was used to somehow infiltrate that radio tower that's my speculation at least yeah. also giovanni was supposed to originally appear in those games as well oh, and yeah. did not happen and they've eventually explained that away to um uh shenanigans uh time travel shenanigans and heart gold and soul silver um but yeah so just another interesting fact if you ever wonder hey What's the deal with that imposter Professor Oak? The answer is he was supposed to be in gold and silver. And, you know, the Pokemon trading card game people got a hold of that art asset, thought it was cool, decided to use it, and then they <laughs> dumped imposter <laughs> Professor Oak. And, yeah, the rest is rest is history. Yeah. Fun gold and silver facts for everyone. Yeah, also, just... I have to add, because Hoffer yet again is trying to... Um, undermine the great name of Evie by not putting this in our show notes. But if you are like me collecting the friends with Evie, the Glaceon figure is now available to purchase. We talked about it last week, Megan. Yeah, sure but you got to remind people it's available to buy right now. Hopper. It's probably sold just, out at this point. I was nope, still there. I checked out, before Megan. the show. I wanted to make sure that you got <laughs> your hands on the Glaceon. And I did, I but nobody and... remembered to warn me about when Evie went on sale and I missed out. However, I did find one on Facebook Marketplace and it's currently being shipped to me. So <laughs> there you go. Yes, I'm just for I'm just I'm just trying to help people who were like me. Very happy. That Glaceon. You, Congratulations. All right. When we get back, we are going to talk about uh the Hellboy creator going wild on Twitter. Drawing a bunch of Pokemon. Mike Manila drawing Pokemon when we get back. Okay. So, Mike Manila has been doing a number of sketches for charity that he, he's been auctioning off for charity because, you know, amid the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of shops are uh, out of uh, out of commission. And these are all, it's all money just, you know, to, to help the comic book industry. Actually, his, his, if I recall correctly, he's auctioning them off to support a charity kitchen. Oh, is he uh, doing a charity kitchen? I yeah. I thought some of them initially were going to Bink, but uh, anyway, he's doing them for cha- for charity purposes. Yeah, that's the important. Uh, he's doing them for charity purposes uh, during the time. And so, uh, Mike Manuel is like the, the reason this is a big deal is because he does not normally do sketches, and when uh, when he does, um, they're very few and far between. And you know, this is a huge opportunity for uh, fans of his to to get some art. No. Now he's done a bunch of zany things. He did all the uh, uh, General Mills uh, serial characters uh, at one point. Uh, he did some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ones. I think kind of at the the very beginning. Uh, a lot of uh, Hellboy stuff, obviously. A lot of kind of just you know uh, his own kind of creation kinds of things. And then he turned his attention to Pokemon. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, are they! gorgeous so the first one that took everyone by surprise was bulbasaur mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i remember 
it got posted on Instagram in the dead of night <laughs> while I was still, I'm pretty sure, I think if I recall correctly, time's a blur, but I'm pretty sure I was still in the hospital at this point uh, with, with my child. And um, that's like the first one that came up. I think it got posted like really late, like either really early Thursday or really late Wednesday. And um, yeah, it's freaking fantastic. Um, and so he posted that, and then he the one after that was Wheezing and Slow Bro. Then he did Gyarados and Mew. There was a Charmander, a Jigglypuff, and a, um, I can't forget, can't remember who the third Pokemon in that group. There was one with Nidoqueen. Uh, there was a Tyranitar and a Gengar, and then he finished off his series with Pikachu. Now, like, the, the thing is about I don't usually get a chance to gush about like comics artwork very often, <laughs> especially on a Pokemon podcast. Like Mike Mignola, he has a very unsettling style mm -hmm. that is very simplistic, uh, but uh, imbues his subjects with a certain level of like creepiness. And it really, you can really see that in this art. Like this Jigglypuff is literally floating in a pool of water. This Jigglypuff is half submerged. Its eyes are wide. It's just looking off into space. Creepy. Mm -hmm. uh, he designed Gengar as like a pixie type character. The smallest we've ever seen Gengar mm -hmm. probably displayed ever. Um, even, even his cute ones like Mew and Bulbasaur, there's just something a little bit off. And it's... Well, just like the, the existential dread you get from like the Psyduck stare. Oh, yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, Psyduck was the other one. And like... Like, a lot of these Pokemon just look like... Like, I love the Slowbro. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you know, we, 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 we talk in Slowbro, by the way. Stay tuned for a fun Poke Fact of the Week about that guy. But, you know, we, we joke around about some of these things. And, like, you know, this is literally one Pokemon who is eating another Pokemon. <laughs> and, like, you don't really, like, think about it, just how creepy that is until you see Mike Mignola's, like, borderline zombie... Uh, like yep. zombie slow bro just staring off to space oh god it was it was absolutely amazing like you know the pokemon company does these like art collaborations from time to time and really they need to just back up to mike mignola's house with an <laughs> art rich truck full of money and just dump it on his front lawn like yeah. we this is what pokemon fans deserve this is yeah. top notch art yeah, they haven't they haven't done one that has impressed me this much since they worked with Junji Ito yeah, for, for the Pokemon series. I mean, when Junji Ito did it, he's a very famous um, horror horror like manga artist, comics artist. It's terrifying what he does to the a lot of heavy lines, a lot of heavy inking. Um, Magnola is like soft terror, and I <laughs> like really love it. Um, still bitter. It seems that he's done, but I'm still bitter he didn't do Eevee or any of the evolutions because I think that would have been like a really weird like Black Mirror kind of thing he could have done with like just never ending Eevees. Um, but no, it's so cool. I would definitely it'll be worth. I'm I'm very curious to see how much they'll they'll be auctioned for because yeah. mm -hmm. Pokemon fans and you know comic book fans are both going to be entering this race together for for a lucky copy. So yeah, I, sure. I will I will admit this this is the first time that I have a Jim Viscardi style story here. Oh, here uh, we go. So oh, let's do it. When when all of this came out and he started posting these pictures, I desperately wanted that Bulbasaur. I have never wanted something in my life that much. Like I, I will straight up admit it. So I proceeded to get in touch with um, you know, uh, a representative of Mike Mignola. <laughs> And asked, name a price. Give me the Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, no shame. And in order to pull, in order to just even get this through, I had to jump through several like hoops to to figure out who to contact officially about this. And also, I had to get approval from my darling wife, who like when she's like, yeah, just like, what's the budget for this? I'm like, no, Darcy, you don't understand. The budget is I'm buying this. <laughs> And so I had to like haggle with her in order to to open up the proverbial flood floodgates and like you know turn off the safety on my credit card 
Unfortunately, Bulbasaur will not be one of the pieces auctioned. That was a gift that Mike did for his daughter, who we can now safely say that Mike Mignola's daughter has excellent taste in Pokemon. True. Sure does. You know, I will also if... note that of, of our favorite Pokemon, only one of ours got represented by Mignola. Although I did think I did think I saw Golem on there. There was a rock that one of the Pokemon was standing on, and that's basically <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. Space. But we did get Gengar, who we did get Gengar, who is a fan yeah, favorite absolutely. of the uh, of us here at the show. Yeah, so that's yes. good. I love the Scyther one, though. Like that's another thing. Like I love Scyther too, uh, but like that one looked great. Scyther, yeah, that one, that one, uh, and the 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 Omastar, like uh, oh, you know, yeah. you, you oh, don't yeah. think of like Omastar as like a great Pokemon, but like you know, like Hellboy. Like, you know, freaking freaking Mignola knows how to do tentacles. Like mm -hmm. he is he is very good at drawing tentacles in a non gross way. Yeah. Uh so let me so outside of personal favorites, so you Megan, you can't pick Vaporeon or whatever. Um, if you could have, have Mignola do one, what what Pokemon would you pick from the original uh one fifty? Oh, Tentacruel. Oh, <laughs> you took mine. That was gonna be mine. <laughs> Tentacruel. Absolutely Tentacruel. There's no way you don't pick Tentacruel in this situation. <laughs> uh, Christian? Uh, I would, oh man, it's, this is hard. I would either go with the legendary birds because I really feel he would capture like their mm. like godliness or I would go with Kingler because, you know, Lobster Johnson. Oh, Kingler would be great. Uh, but, the, my, my number two, uh, if someone picked Tentacruel, was going to be Magmar. Oh, that would be a mm. that would be like the first time Magmar got depicted in a cool way. I exactly. I will say this of the 150 original Pokemon, like Magmar is probably my least favorite design. Oh, really? I do mm. I do not like his butt head. <laughs> That's true. I think he would also do a really good desk clocks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there's so, so many. Like I said, like if the Pokemon company does not like actively try to collaborate with Mignola, it is a missed opportunity and like you know what like Mignola like I know he's still like occasionally doing Hellboy stuff right now because they brought back like mm -hmm. the Hellboy in like the 1950s right I think that's yep. still a thing so I know he's still kind of like show running the Hellboy series for Dark Horse but you know what he's he's kind of like enjoying his retirement or semi-retirement mm -hmm. um so you know what like just let him go nuts what a win-win if they could just like, yeah, right and just like let, just and let him paint right like oh, go God. full color paint oh it would be so pretty yeah, yeah. Uh, so Mignola uh he came to Columbus last year there's a comics festival that I helped run called Cartoon Crossroads Columbus cross yeah Cartoon Crossroads Columbus it's a strange name it's CXC um and so Mignola was one of our featured guests and he brings with him a, a sketchbook uh, like a book just full of his sketches and he's just like sitting at a table and he's just like selling them so i was like i told darcy i was like i'm going to buy myself a mike mignola sketch so i go up to him the the, the cheapest one is 200 dollars. anything with hellboy is like 400 <laughs> and i was like i was like okay uh so yeah so like you know let's get this started uh where's your stripe and he's like looks up at me he's like oh i'm so sorry i only am taking cash it's like oh mike mignola just <laughs> of course you are like I just, I just was dying, and he still, he still like sold out, like yeah. you know, straight up saying like, yeah, sorry, I'm only doing cash, and yeah. just like, not, not even an issue. Like only, there's only a handful of artists that could like really pull that off, and Mike Mignola is one of them. For sure. Basically, yes. <laughs> Man. All right, Christian, why don't you hit us with the uh, Pokemon fact of the week? So last week. We were, uh, one of our reviews asked us what happens to Slowbro or Slowking if the shelter gets pulled off of its head slash tail. There is an official answer to that. Technically, according to the Pokedex, if you pull the shelter from its tail, it becomes a Slowpoke once again, meaning Slowbro is one of the few Pokemon if not the only Pokemon that is technically capable of de-evolution. That's, that's, that's crazy. It is. Now, this is not, Except obviously, there's no basis of this. And the only reason I remembered, even remembered this, was last year they were doing, like, a Pokemon fact a day on the Pokemon Twitter account. Mm. And this was, like, what they used for Slowbro. Um, huh. And I was just like, 
wait a second. So de-evolution technically is allowed. And that is a thing that exists in the Pokemon world. Huh. It's just, Interesting. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Can you just imagine? Like, but like, does the does the shell then turn back into a shelter? Shelter. I mean, well, originally that that secondary shelter yeah. was supposed to be a like I I can't remember if it was supposed to be a it wasn't supposed to be shelter if I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah, it was supposed to or, be. Or it was supposed to be a different Pokemon. Yeah. Um. And they they originally changed that, but they liked the Slowbro design enough that they kept it. Because, let's face it, a, a Slowbro with a cloister yeah. <laughs> does not have anywhere. And also, once again, probably would have the wrong connotations yeah. there. Uh, let's just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be, a lot of our younger audience is going to be asking themselves, Mommy, Daddy, what uh, the Oh, man. Mean? Well, uh, on that you- note, before we, lo- you know, this was a nice show before we lost our clean rating. And, uh, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that about does it for us today. Uh, normally in this session, we will, uh, you know, we'll re- take some time to read some listener reviews, but we are short on time. So if you want to leave a listener review, go on to iTunes, give us five, st- if you leave us a five-star review and we read it on the air, you get a free comicbook.com t-shirt. Uh, if you have any questions for us, or you want to just talk about Pokemon and just, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, you know, you got burning questions or things on your mind, tips or tricks, find us on Twitter. You can find me at Jim Viscardi. You can find me on Twitter at Megan Peters CB. And I am at C Hoffer C Bus. So until next week, where we have no idea what kind of Pokemon news uh, uh, we will get, we'll catch you at the same time, same place, every Thursday, wherever podcasts can be found. We'll catch you there.